Hello! In this video, we're going to talk about triangulated irregular networks, or TINs. This is something that you have probably seen, but maybe didn't understand exactly what you were seeing. So a TIN is essentially a vector representation of continuous spatial data. Another way to think about that is it's a list of X, Y, Z nodes that are going to be connected by edges. So what do I mean by that? Here's our X, here's our Y, those are our Cartesian coordinates, and we also add to that a Z value that could be elevation, of course it could be any continuous value, but we almost always see these used to represent topography, so elevation is usually what Z is. Now, these are connected by uh, edges, to form a series of irregularly spaced and sized triangles. However, importantly, these triangles must share borders. Okay, so you can see here is a kind of contour, colored contour of a little simple mountain below here, and it's represented by this network of nodes and edges which are making up triangles, and each of the triangles is sharing an edge. And then here's what that looks like if uh, those triangular facets are shaded by elevation and also some hill shading is applied. You can see it's a pretty reasonable way to represent uh, topography. So one thing to also note about TINs is they are generally based on what's called Delaney triangulation. And this is the idea that if you have a network of connected triangles, and you take any given triangle, actually why don't we look at this one right here, and you circumscribe a circle that goes through all three of the vertexes, so that circle, you cannot have any nodes that fall within that circle. So you draw a circle around every triangle, and none of the nodes can fall within the circles. So that's how you kind of govern the spacing of the nodes and the size of the triangles. So why would we use a TIN data set? One reason is that it can be uh, a quick and easy way to deal with irregularly spaced data sets, such as LIDAR or drone-based photogrammetry. These are essentially methods where the kind of native data is not a grid. It is not a regularly spaced raster. The native data is a bunch of points that might be already irregularly spaced. So we can render a TIN pretty quickly from that. Another advantage is that this can be sometimes a compact way to represent complicated surfaces and do that accurately because we can actually vary the size of the triangles depending on the complexity of the terrain. So take a look at this example. We've got this kind of complicated ridge right here. And then we've got these uh, you know, lowlands where these slopes are much gentler and more consistent. So in a TIN representation, we can represent uh, these gentle lowlands with large triangles, and then we can go to a finer triangle mesh to represent some of this complex topography uh, in these valleys along the ridges. So we see that over here too, big triangles in the lowlands, uh, small triangles on the steeper slopes. So that's as opposed to like a raster DEM where you'd have to be constantly working with a single pixel size. And finally, I'll just say something about how TIN data is displayed. Uh, ArcGIS or other softwares often can display this in different ways. You can visualize the edges as a bunch of lines. You can visualize the faces as essentially uh, colored panels that are colored by the mean elevation of the triangular panel. In this case, we have some hill shade applied as well. Or you can visualize the nodes themselves essentially as a point data set, right? This is just a bunch of those node points colored by elevation here, or we can contour those node points. Thanks for listening.